Welcome to Crawl Space. I'm Tim here today with Lance. Lance, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic today, Tim, mostly because I know our great listeners are going to hear a conversation coming up that's truly going to warm their hearts. But before their hearts get warmed, Tim, I have to know, is your heart warm? How are you, sir? I am doing great. I think my heart's warm, but I guess I can't be sure. I am really excited about this conversation today with Don Powell. He is a man from Michigan. He is not into true crime like a lot of the guests that we have, but instead, Don is embroiled in an old-fashioned neighborhood mystery. Embroiled is a great way to put it. Don recently discovered the placement of two miniature dolls inside of his custom-made mailbox that is in the likeness, sort of, of his home. It's similar to his home. It's not one of those exact replicas. And one day when he was going out to get the mail, he discovered these two miniature dolls had taken up residence. There was no question that this man needed to come on the show. Yeah, there are a lot of mysteries inside this one story this keeps happening i mean that that's one thing that that we needed to try to get to the bottom of and really just ask him about his neighborhood who are his neighbors and things like that so this is quite a charming mystery just a lot of fun a fun mystery with a really fun guy named don powell that's correct and there'll be links in the show notes for the articles that have been written about this. But if you just want to Google Don Powell Mailbox, he also is the president and CEO of the American Institute of Preventive Medicine. Super smart guy. You can just go to healthylife.com. And he's also a psychologist, which is interesting because I feel like he's going to be presenting to us a profile of the perpetrator who's setting up the dolls named Mary and Shelley in his mailbox. I hope so. Yeah, it's. I wonder if uh, he was targeted because he's a psychologist. A great mystery to unpack, and uh, so I'm happy that you're here with us to unpack it. Let us know what you think of this episode on social media. Find us at Crawl Space Podcast or Crawl Space Pod. And you can also, if you so desire, while you're online, head on over to wherever you can rate and review this episode the entire catalog of Crawl Space right there. You know, give us a five star. If it goes above five stars, you can certainly give us more than five stars and a lovely review. And Tim, if they wanted to listen to this without the ads, where could they do that? Let's solve that mystery right now. Well, it's not too much of a mystery where to find Crawl Space Premium, but you can do so now on Apple Podcasts. It's $4.99 a month. You get ad-free episodes and early releases. Also, our weekly bonus show. And if you're not an Apple user, you can go to crawlspace.supportingcast .fm and find the same product there. And we're going to break real quick for commercial and we'll be right back with Dr. Don Powell. Thanks to our sponsors and now we're back to the program. Welcome to the podcast, Don Powell. Don, how are you today? Yeah, very good, Tim. Nice to be here. So great to have you on. You have one of the oddest and most endearing stories that I think we're going to bring to this show. I'm trying to still wrap my head around what it is exactly, but before we get to that, can you introduce yourself? And you have a pretty impressive professional career as well. Give the audience an idea of who you are. Sure. Um, Don Powell. I have a PhD in psychology from the University of Michigan. I taught in their psych department for uh, eight years. My doctoral work was in tobacco cessation, which led me into the wellness field and established a company called the American Institute for Preventive Medicine, celebrating our 40th year anniversary this year, 2023. And we put on our worksite wellness programs at companies and hospitals around the country and enjoy the whole field of preventive medicine and, and keeping people well rather than them having to uh, be treated when they're sick. And we brought you on here because recently, did this happen at the end of the summer of last year? Actually, August of uh, 2022 is when... Uh, the mystery started to occur, um, and uh, it's ongoing. Uh, even <laughs> an update uh, two nights ago, there was new uh, new decor in the mailbox. Uh, whoever's doing this is very creative. They bring out different <laughs> dollhouse kinds of things. My mailbox is not a dollhouse, although it appears that it has become one. I might be more well known for my mailbox than anything that I did in the health field, which uh, spanned... Uh, for many, many uh, decades. Okay, so you've mentioned your mailbox. Some people out there may have read the articles that have been written about this, but can you take us back to when you first discovered what's going on with your mailbox? My wife and I moved into a rather modern home 
home with a flat roof uh, five years ago, and it had you know your typical plastic mailbox you'd get at a Home Depot or Lowe's uh, department store. And we just thought um, you know maybe something a little more modern, a little more different than what you typically see with mailboxes. I like to ride my bike, and in a neighboring subdivision, I noticed that there were many homes that had mailboxes that emulated the house itself, almost exact replicas actually of the house itself, the same type of garage, the same type of trestles, same chimney, front door, and so on. And I thought, well, that that's kind of cute, but you know, I don't think I want something that's just a cookie cutter image of the home. So we tracked down the mailbox maker and asked him to come up with something that would be contemporary, but not just be a replica of our house, but that's something that would blend with the home. And he came up with a, a rather um, a nice structure that, you know, quasi looks like the house, but not really, but certainly looks like a home, it just may not be our home. Uh, it has uh, five windows. It has what's called daylight windows up at the top. So it's kind of an extra level of just windows in the middle of the uh, roof of the mailbox. He made kind of a thatched stucco type of roof, put in solar lighting as well so that that the mailbox actually lights up at night. Nothing really ever happened with this mailbox other than we'd get compliments from neighbors or anybody who uh, happened to see it walking by. And in August, uh, I think it was like August 21st of last summer, my wife and I, uh, we were going to walk our dog where we decided to stop and get the mail. And along with the, uh, the pizza coupons and bills and a letter or two, there's these two dolls sitting on a, a wooden miniature, what I'd call a love seat. And they had a sticky note attached to uh, to the love seat that said, we like your mailbox and we've decided to live here. And then it was signed Mary and Shelley. <laughs> and I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> My wife doesn't know what to make of it. We look at each other and says, you know, this has got to be a mistake. Somebody put their dolls meant for somebody else in our mailbox. The second thought we had was, oh, maybe somebody is doing this for all the mailboxes near us. And we live on a cul-de-sac that has four houses in addition to ours. Uh, although it's probably illegal, we peeked in their mailboxes to see if they indeed had the same same dolls there. And None of them did. And the dolls are not the most attractive dolls that you might find. So I took them out of the mailbox. I brought them into the garage and I was just ready to toss them into the garbage pail. And then I just had a second thought that, you know, well, maybe whoever did this may want to retrieve their dolls realizing they put it in the wrong place. So I put it back in the mailbox, you know, waited a couple of weeks, and I have kind of a sense of humor. So I decided to go on an app called Nextdoor, if you're familiar with it. It's a local neighborhood sort of thing where you can find out, you know, recommendations for a plumber or a restaurant. So if somebody lost their cat, if there's a coyote in sighting in the area and so on. And so I went online and kind of pretended I was a sleuth and was trying to solve this mystery of who indeed put these dolls in my mailbox. And I asked if anybody and all of the people on next door, if they knew the persons or person uh, responsible for this. And I made it into kind of a cloak and dagger and described the, the, the dolls and uh, mentioned about how we had this custom mailbox and would they please come forward? And if they didn't, I would contact and once again, tongue in cheek, ask the uh, city of Orchard Lake to produce extra police patrols to see if the, indeed this ever happened again. I said I took fingerprints off of the mailbox, which of course I didn't. The response was just incredible of just people coming up with who might have done it. You know, they wanted to be fellow detectives as well. And I know you do podcasts mostly on, on crime. And so this is you know somewhat up your alley, <laughs> although not usually crime involving uh, dolls in a mailbox. Uh, I'm sure none of your podcasts prior to this touch on the subject. That's correct. <laughs> so uh, I got an incredible response and I left it at that, left the dolls in the mailbox, moved them towards the back. It's a rather big mailbox, I have to say. We can get Amazon packages, UPS packages in there, and you know it accommodates a fair amount. And then about... Now, maybe three weeks later, I go back once again, getting the mail and Mary and Shelley are there. They added cousin Shirley to the dollhouse. They changed the love seat to a four poster bed with a floral quilt and they added a throw rug to the uh, to the house or the mailbox. They also added a painting and a Labrador, <laughs> a little mini Labrador, Labradoodle. Uh, that I call Maggie, and named after our own dog, who I just assumed was a service dog to take care of Cousin Shirley because she had um, one foot, as many dolls, <laughs> tends to happen to many dolls over time. 
Um, so I thought that was incredible. So I went back online again and started to create this elaborate story about the lives of Mary and Shelley. And then I also got a letter maybe a week later that said to our landlords. And this all of a sudden things started to come together uh, about Mary and Shelley because they'd seen that I had obviously the person was following the posts I were doing on next door. And so the letter said something to the effect of that they used to live in a two story Dutch style dollhouse, but that Shirley, who has only one foot, as I mentioned, had trouble going up and down the steps. And they liked the layout of our one story ranch. Plus they liked the fact that our home was contemporary. They were tired of this traditional uh, Dutch style home. That was that was the next contact or potential contact with the uh, uh, person responsible. So I thought, okay, well, there's some interaction with these people. I still don't know who, who they are. And then I posted again and I, and I started talking about the lives of Mary and Shelley. Uh, Shelley, who is a man, by the way, some people feel that there are uh, uh, two women living there, but I, I'm pretty sure Shelley is a man, um, that he's a retired executive from a, um, a national wellness company, coincidentally, and that uh, Mary is the the breadwinner. She works from home. And that came about because at one point they changed the four poster bed for a workstation, <laughs> a little wooden workstation and had Mary uh, working from the workstation. So I said that she, you know, she uh, worked remotely. Come Halloween time, uh, Mary and Shelley were, were no longer there, and they were replaced by two skeletons in black robes, uh, miniature skeletons. I went online again to you know report this, and I said that the skeletons, I, I call them scary skeletons, and then I kind of put in parentheses, do I really need to say scary skeletons? Aren't skeletons by their nature scary? And I used many, 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 way too many words to describe the skeletons. I also said that each skeleton had 206 bones, something that I remembered from my biology class uh, in, in eighth grade. So that was Halloween. People got a big kick out of that. Uh, flash forward to uh, Christmas time, the skeletons are gone, and there's now a Christmas tree one day. And I thought, okay, that's nice, they have a Christmas tree. But then two days later, there were about seven or eight packages underneath the Christmas tree. And once again, everything is miniature. I had one reporter ask me, you know, was there anything in the packages? And I said, I really didn't think about opening them up. I mean, there could be, could be too much in a, in a little thimble-sized package. But people are curious about wanting to know to know that. Flash forward, we had an ice storm and uh, Mary and Shelley literally were locked in the mailbox. And so people were then concerned about whether they could get out. And I said, once again, you know, they're working from home. They don't need to get out. But plus they have a wood burning stove. So they don't have to worry about the fact that the whole area was without electricity. And that seemed to satisfy some people. The comments are just, on one hand, extremely positive. I mean, people are just wanting a, a sense of humor, something to smile about. I mean, we live in a, a time now of such negativity and you know, the news tends to be a lot of gloom and doom. And this is just refreshing. You know, it's not political, just gives people a good laugh. And, and hundreds of thousands, literally hundreds of thousands of people have read either the articles or seen the videos. I saw that there was 390,000 views on TikTok where uh, USA Today had done a video and they put it on or somebody put it on TikTok. People are doing commentaries about the, the video on TikTok. They're their own reporters. So it's just really blown up. And, and people... Um, we shouldn't say on the edge of their seats, but clearly people wanting to learn more about Mary and Shelley. And I have to give credit to the, the people that are doing this or the person doing this because they're creative. I'm just the messenger in terms of, you know, showing photos on Nextdoor or on my Facebook page, just keeping people aware of, of what's going on because of this rather great, great interest uh, that I never thought would occur. Well, it seems like you're both kind of working in concert, I would, I would say, to sort of create their story to some degree at least. Well, they, they kind of color the story by what they put in the mailbox. And the latest, in fact, this is a breaking news on your podcast, is two nights ago, I go into the mailbox. It was nighttime. The solar lights were you know, lighting up the mailbox. And I noticed that this is different than before. A lot of people have asked questions about, you know, what do Mary and Shelley do to keep busy in the mailbox? And I think that might have then, you know, served as the impetus for the persons or persons responsible. But Shelley is now an artist. He's uh, working on a picture on, a, on an easel. He's got little paint brushes on the, on the table. And Mary is uh, planting vegetables. Uh, she's uh, developing an inside vegetable garden. And sure enough, she's with a little trowel, little shovel, little gloves, and little seed, seeds, 
and working on the, the vegetable garden. So that'll be my next post is um, I like to kind of, you know, leave maybe three or four weeks in between one post to the next. Well, thank you for the exclusive uh, podcast breaking news. We appreciate that. <laughs> I have so many questions here. So the surrounding area that you live at, you said you you live on a cul-de-sac. So is that like a turnaround type area, like a dead end with a, a turnaround? It, it would normally be a dead end as far as most cul-de-sacs, but our, our property is kind of unique in that our subdivision is only, I think it's 27 homes in our sub. But there's a path that goes through our property that we allow people to use to walk, ride bikes, and even take golf carts because in the next sub over... Um, there's a country club. Some people in our sub, some people in another sub, uh, you know, even north of that, take their golf carts because they don't want to drive on main roads through our property. So the visibility of the mailboxes is rather large, given that it's not just you know people in our sub, but people from several other subs. Uh, going through our property and pa- passing the mailbox. So the number of people that could be or that are suspects is, is quite large. I even went on next door and, and said that there were 434 suspects because that was at the time the number of people who had commented on my original next door post. So I, I assumed anybody who commented, you know, just like a criminal goes back to the uh, the scene of the crime, I figured somebody on next door commenting on, on the uh, mailbox is, is certainly a suspect. Yeah, I think that's fair. Do Doing what we do, I would say you're you're right to think that way. They're definitely watching because what's the point of it, right? The reaction, and and that's that's what kind of eggs me on to write more about it and eggs them on. I think as if they see what I write and they see the comments. I mean, I'm not exaggerating here. I mean, you know, you know, the the, the adorable, it's so delightful, made my day. You know, really heartwarming. It's the first time I smiled in over a month since my sister passed away. Thank you. This would have been right up her alley. You know, it's it's hitting a chord here of some levity, something whimsical, and there's just not enough fun in this world right now. And Mary and Shelley and, and their story is in indeed providing fun for people. Really is a, a fun mystery, and it's one that we appreciate as well because we have a lot of heavy topics on for the most part, and we just love having like these breaks where we can talk about something that's not really a crime. And I was curious about the, like, if we're, talking about like doing some detective work the letter that was written it was was that handwritten actually there were two letters one was the handwritten that, that they talked about where they previously lived the second one just came actually um, maybe three weeks ago right after the news broke on USA Today and it was a front page here in, at the Detroit Free Press and then the Washington Post did a story and so the the typewritten note which was kind of in a script sort of type, said that they had been following the story online because, and then in the mailbox was a miniature newspaper and that they had followed it in print. There were these little presents that uh, they gave separate from the Christmas presents. These, I should say packages that were addressed to, to Mary and Shelley uh, that entered the mailbox and then even little miniature envelopes. Truth be told, there is a, a mini mailbox outside the mailbox that I added that holds miniature things and that was part of one of my posts is that Mary and Shelley told me they were sick and tired of their tiny letters and packages getting mixed up with my wife's and mine and that they demanded their own mailbox. So I accommodated that with the miniature mailbox that now has packages in it and letters. You built a mailbox on your mailbox for their mail? Right. But the truth be told, I, I'm not creative to build a mailbox. I got it on Amazon. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's a dollhouse mailbox. So yeah, it's a nice little wooden mailbox. And uh, the only thing it's missing is the little red thing to go up to show that there's mail waiting to be taken. But yeah, so it's a mailbox on a mailbox. Box. It's amazing how much work is put into this. Yeah, that, that that's that, that's but once again where I have to say whoever is responsible is 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 super creative and imaginative in in doing this. Even though we we don't we don't have any contact with one another, we're both kind of working in tandem to make people happy. You know, to get this this story out. If it's just stopped with Mary and Shelley sitting on a, a love seat, I would have run out of material <laughs> months ago, and and the story would have been a dead end. But the fact that they periodically uh, upgrade the decor uh, gives me fodder for uh, additional posts. And I get kind of whimsical myself. One of my posts dealt with the fact that there was now some concern about UPS 
no longer wanting to deliver to our mailbox because it was getting crowded in there and that that I got a note from them saying they would no longer deliver, that Amazon was actually going to have a meeting of their board of directors after the weekend was over because Jeff Bezos was coming out of retirement and he wanted to be present to this decision where they still deliver Amazon packages to the mailbox. And then I even brought in the mailman because people are always suspicious of the mailman. Some people think he's responsible for doing this. Coincidentally, this mailman is the same mailman we had where we used to live five years ago. I had asked him, you know, are you okay with this? And he goes, oh, this is fine. You know, they're they're not bothering my delivery of the mail. And I, I really get a kick out of it. And I, I went on to say that, you know, he likes to tell family and friends that he knew us before we had people living in our mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> so he feels rather special. <laughs> we'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsor. And a thank you to our sponsors. Back to the program. This is making you a bit famous. How does your wife feel about that? She's not into the spotlight. Like I, I, I don't mind being, <laughs> and she's rather shy. And so whenever we um, are asked for a joint interview, she's rather uh, reluctant. But you know, we'll give a quote here and there. She enjoys it. When I told her, "You're not going to believe, Nancy, when you look in the mailbox, what you're going to see," she gets that sense of excitement. When this first started to happen, I send photos to our kids. Jordan's 41, Brett is uh, 37. They immediately said, "Oh, Dad's doing it." you know, that I was, you know, doing the hoax, which I do get accused of. You know, people have said, I'm the one responsible. I'm one of the culprits that people think the mailman's the other. Other people think it's the mailbox maker, the guy who, you know, came up with the mailbox. Once again, um, it's not me. Um, uh, Nancy assured my sons that I was not doing it. I don't think it's the mailbox maker. He's rather uh, eccentric and reclusive in nature. He rarely comes out of his out of his house other than to do maintenance on the mailboxes that he makes. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of a lifelong contract with the mailbox maker. And not only does he make the initial mailbox, but he'll do maintenance on it once a year, repaint it. He's going to come fix the roof. We had a little bit of a leak. Uh, Mary and Shelley complained that water was getting on the floor. That'll be the only time I really see him. I, I don't think it's the mailman. I know it's not the mailman. I have no interest in finding out who it is at this point. Uh, a lot of the comments are, you know, well, in store a, a camera. Peek out at nighttime to see, you know, when it's being done. Which, by the way, you can see the mailbox from the home. And we live kind of on, on a sloped lot. We're below ground level. So we could not even see the mailbox if somebody was putting something in unless we happened to be outside in the front yard. I was just thinking about everything that comes together to make this like the perfect situation for this person. The position of your home, not being able to see the mailbox and like the mailbox itself is big enough and it looks like a home. All of these factors came together and this person or person's had the idea to do this and keep it going. It's like it's like such a fortunate situation that you Yeah, had. it was a perfect storm for people living in a mailbox, yeah. <laughs> you said that you uh, discovered it on August 21st. Have you ever thought about that date? Like, is there a significance to that date at all? No, or? the Ides of August, no. Uh, <laughs> 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 I, I'll tell you this, but I never thought of, and this came up in a lot of the comments, Mary Shelley is the author of the book Frankenstein. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I never read the book Frankenstein. And as I said earlier, Earlier, you know, 99.9% .9 of the posts are just positive. People enjoy it. But there are the segment of the population that looks for the evil in this. You know, some people think they're voodoo doll. You know, the next thing that's going to happen is there's going to be a life-size doll in the house. And going to be creating destruction. In fact, somebody asked, do I have a neighbor named Dr. Frankenstein? I don't. So I, I can't I can't say that they're responsible. <laughs> so there, there is that symbolism. And, and I, I'm thinking now that, you know, it's more than a coincidence that their names are Mary and Shelley, but I never made that connection until recently. Now, why do you think you and your mailbox was chosen? A couple of reasons, and I think uh, Lance referred to a, a couple of them. One is the fact that it looks like a cozy home. A lot of the comments are, I wish I had that mailbox. I wish this happened to me. <laughs> you know, people are jealous of that. The dolls are in my mailbox and not their mailbox. The other thing is, is that I think people realize I have a sense of humor, and not only just from the next door post and creating this story, but along that path that I said earlier connects my subdivision to 
through the other subdivision, I have, you know, quirky kinds of signs there like, you know, uh, slow down children, children at play, scenic lookout point. Probably your, your listeners aren't familiar with the Burma shave ads. You guys probably are too young to remember Burma shave ads back in the 1950s or 60s. You guys weren't even born then. But, you know, they used to be along the side of the road billboards that would have kind of a, a series of rhymes to it. If music is, and that would be one sign, and then you drive another mile, it says, what you crave, and then there would be another sign another mile away, or buy a tuba, and then there would be a sign for Burma Shave, which was a shave cream that was popular back in the 50s and 60s. I put up a series of those kind of signs along the path. So there's a, a, a tree in the middle of the path, and I made it into a, a roundabout. You know, I said roundabout, you know, yield to oncoming traffic. So I think people have a, know I have a sense of humor, clearly, from, from the signs. And then clearly the fact that I kind of rolled with the punches on next door. Let them know that one, it was initially okay to do it, and two, it's certainly okay to continue to do it. Okay, so your neighborhood uh, is aware of your quirky sense of humor. Yeah, certainly anybody that walks through the path would know that. And, and I would say, you know, over the course of the summer, there's probably a hundred, hundred and fifty different people that use that path at some some point or another. Some are regular walkers that walk that path every day. Others, you know, more sporadically or just during the, the summertime. I think, you know, uh, as Lance said, the, the nature of the, the house, the fact that I can't, I can't see what they're doing, uh, they do it under the cover of darkness, and I couldn't see them even if I, you know, opened up the front door and said, aha, I caught you. I can't see them, <laughs> given that we're, we're down, down low. And really, I have, as I said earlier, no... No interest in, in, in learning it. I think it, it would take away some of the fun. So they've celebrated, as far as we know, Halloween and Christmas. Any other holidays? Yeah, no other holidays. But I did say in one of the articles is that I'm looking forward to July 4th, see what happens for um, Independence Day. So I'm kind of curious to see if something is going to be done there. But, you know, yeah, how you solve crimes. And, you know, usually there's a, a spacing in between, you know, one crime to another, particularly if it's a serial killer or something like that. I'm seeing that there are more <laughs> uh, more changes to the decor of the, the mailbox of late. Uh, since the story broke, there have been two changes where normally there wouldn't be a change in decor for at least a month, sometimes two months apart. I have a feeling that the publicity is, is causing them to want to do more of this. And I don't think it'll ever become a, a, a daily thing. <laughs> I, think it, I think it's kind of expensive, actually. These, these are high-quality doll furniture. I mean, wood. There's a wood burning stove that's made out of wood. A four poster bed is, you know, rather elaborate. The dog is just a, a dog. The, the dolls, as I said, are wooden and, and handmade. Is that I actually have requests from people, uh, comments, wanting to know if they can give gifts to the dolls. Seriously. There's a man in the United Kingdom that uh, wants to crochet sweaters for them. I have somebody who lives in Farmington Hills, which is a neighboring uh, subdivision or neighboring town, uh, that asked if he could do some original artwork for the inside of the mailbox. And I even had a physician offering Mary and Shelley lifetime health care. <laughs> Offer Mary and Shelley a spot on the show if they want to come on. If they could, okay. Yeah, they, they've been silent about that, but it doesn't hurt to ask. This hasn't turned into a daily thing. And then you said it would get kind of expensive to put all these high quality miniatures in there. Is this something that you think they're hand making? No, I think they, I think they would buy it. Um, you know, there's, you know, this whole market of doll furniture, what they do with it when they take them out of our mailbox, because the only things that tend to be stationary are Mary and Shelley. Shirley comes every now and then. Shirley is no longer there now, actually. They took out Shirley when they brought in the art studio and the uh, gardening. I don't know where the four poster bed went. I don't know where the skeletons are. Yeah, no, I think they're spending a, a pretty penny. On, on on this miniature miniature furniture. So how many times uh, in totality has this happened? I think we're up to eight or nine decor changes is, is what I refer to, to them as. Uh, as I said, more frequently of late, rarely does something that has been there that's taken away come back other than the people. In fact, there was a, it was a period of time about maybe two months, maybe almost three, where nothing changed in the mailbox and people were commenting that, you know, did Mary, Shelley, Mary and Shelley go to Florida for the winter? 
but they didn't. They were locked in the mailbox during that ice storm and the, the snowstorm. And but I have a feeling that the uh, person or persons responsible may have been away for the winter, <laughs> thus the uh, extended period of time where there were no changes. But they're clearly back now because uh, given uh, the number of changes that have occurred recently. Any indication on how old they are? I would think that they're either family with young children, that they're buying the furniture for for that, you know, with recycling the furniture for maybe a kid's doll house, or maybe somebody older, empty nesters like my wife and myself that have a lot of free time on their hands. You know, I'm a psychologist, but I have not done a psychological profile yet of who the person might be. That that might be the next thing in store as far as something that I should uh, consider doing. I also, um, people press me, do you think it's a man or a woman? I would think it's a woman. I think there's more creativity there than a man would do. Some of the decorating is quite nice. I don't think too many men are good at uh, interior decorating or interior design. But that's just, uh, you know, my, my thought that it's a woman, but I have no, no proof of that. Are there any known pranksters in your immediate vicinity? No. In fact, there aren't teenagers in the area. The this, this subdivision is mostly, you know, people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. So there's not like a, a teenager that might be doing it. There's no young children. No, there's nobody that uh, has, you know, stuck out in my mind that, that might be the prankster. Well, whether whether you've done it yet or not, we're coming up with a psychological profile right here on the air. It's got to be someone that you know. And it's definitely a sly prankster, it seems like. Someone who's got it inside them, but not everybody knows yet. Yeah. Uh, so they're kind of nudging you because they saw you as sort of one of their own. And this is your career looking at crimes. What, what's your thought of the profile based upon what I've thus so 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 far uh tim you i think identified somebody that you know knew that i would roll with the punches they saw an opportunity that oh the mailbox can't be seen <laughs> seen from the home they must go buy it a fair amount because uh i don't think they could just stop at the cul-de-sac go to my mailbox and then walk in the other you know walk back where they came from because that might be obvious to one of the other neighbors so i think they continue on that path to the other sub even if they don't want to go there just to kind of cover their tracks. I was thinking right along those lines as well, like the Amazon delivery person or the the mailman, somebody who wouldn't stand out if they were in that area, like around mailboxes. I don't think Amazon would do it because it's never really the same Amazon delivery person. Right. I feel like a delivery person might be one of the last people it would be because they could actually lose their job and there would be real life repercussions. Definitely don't think it's a delivery person. It is a crime to put something in somebody else or to open somebody else's mailbox. Now, somebody else online said, though, it's not really a The crime only relates to preventing mail from being delivered. There's really not a crime for things being in a mailbox. Maybe there is still, though, a crime of opening somebody else's mailbox that's not your mailbox and putting something in, but it's not hurting the delivery of mail. So I'm kind of, you know, a little perplexed as to if it's really a true crime or not. Certainly it's not something I'm ever going to report. Clearly now the perpetrators know that. And we'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Thanks to our sponsors, and now we're back to the program. You've said that this most likely takes place under the cloak of darkness, the the cover of night. Are we thinking, <laughs> you know, one, two o'clock in the morning, or or like maybe a little earlier? Yeah, I think early. I think somebody one or two o'clock in the morning. Um, literally, there are police patrols in our area uh, throughout the night, and so I, I don't think they want to be that out that late because they might be stopped by a policeman. Uh, I'm, I'm 72, as is my wife, and you know we don't stay up as late as we used to. So the cover of darkness now could be nine o'clock in the evening for, as far as our ability to see who might be doing it. I mean, we have dinner, we take our dog for a walk, and we're, we're in bed watching some Netflix show by eight o'clock. So uh, it doesn't have to be very late, but I don't think it would be very late, though, either, because uh, that might uh, create a suspicion to uh, police them might be doing a patrol. A lot of dogs in the neighborhood? Uh, out of the 27 homes, uh, I think maybe uh, eight or nine dogs. We, we we have a dog. Now, our dog, unfortunately, is deaf, um, so he, he wouldn't alert us to, 
somebody. But once again, the mailbox is a good 30 yards from the, the front door of the house. So he's not going to you know, hear somebody. He doesn't even respond now when Amazon rings the doorbell when they leave a package out there. So so Maggie is, is out as far as uh, helping us in, in any way. My wife and I are, are helpless as far as, you know, going to sleep early. Uh, somebody could be doing it, you know, nine o'clock on. Uh, during the winter time, they could even be doing it seven o'clock on because it's it's dark it's dark then. Now you raise another point though, is that would they be spotted by another neighbor? You know, forget about us, and that's possible. But it is a quiet subdivision. Everybody, uh, although you know people are friendly and they say hello to one another, it's not like we're chummy chummy. Although you know, now I'm thinking about it, it's not like you can do a quick open the mailbox, throw something in, walk past, and nobody notice. They, they set these things up. I mean, there's a, a pattern to what they're doing. So my take is that they've got to spend at least five to seven minutes each time they're putting something in the mailbox. So they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're there for a while, uh, but they haven't been discovered by any of the other neighbors. And as I said, not discovered by my wife or myself. Okay. I think a dog owner in that area could be oh, that's a likely... You, oh, that's where you're getting uh, at. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because they're used to the amount of time you can be out there without someone driving by or walking by or running by or seeing, uh, you know, they, I'm sure they pick up poop. So they spend some time on their neighbor's lawns at times. No, that's good. So that's, that's, that's my that's thought. Possible. And, and actually coincidentally, now we're back to the mailbox maker. As I said, he's rather reclusive and rarely comes out, but his wife has these four little miniature dogs and she goes through that path. You know, it gives a little suspicion to her and she did once leave something in the mailbox, which was the original design of what the mailbox was going to look like before her husband built it. So that that gives some cause there. But she's got four dogs, four leashes. That would be a little tangling of you know, the leashes to try to start putting the stuff in the mailbox. So I haven't fully ruled her out. I was thinking that it would be an amazing way to drum up business for her husband's mailbox <laughs> building. Because you you keep like you have to mention him. You have to, when you tell the story, you have to say you know this guy built this mailbox custom for me. You know maybe some people will think to themselves, well, I'd love to have a mailbox like that. That's like it looks like a home. Maybe I'll get some dolls. You're absolutely right, Rance. And then and that's a common question. You know, I, I love this mailbox. Where can I get one? Who can you give me? Give me the name of the mailbox maker. And then even people who s- assume it's the mailbox maker that he's drumming up business, but he's got a four year backload. Back, back, back list for mailboxes. He does not need the business. I've been accused of staging this because in one of the articles I mentioned that, and, I, and I'm serious about this, is um, I write health books as part of my uh, day job. I actually even wrote a book on sports cliches. It's just kind of a fun thing. I have seriously thought about writing a children's book based upon this story. I went online to do some research about that. I even used Chad G, GPT I gave some parameters of what the story might be, and I did it three different ways, and I came up with three different storylines or how to attack this issue. You know, do I attack it as... I'm a mailbox, tall and stout, and from the mailbox perspective, <laughs> do I do it from Mary and Shelley's perspective, and that they're the the protagonists, or do I do it from my wife and my, my myself? You know, this elderly, kindly elderly couple that go and retrieve mail from their mailbox, and they're lonely because their adult children have all moved out. So, do I do it from that perspective? And Chad GPT, GPT came up with all three different scenarios of how to tackle the story. Which one did you like? the best i think um and talking with other people it should be from mary and shelly from from their their perspective of uh you know why they chose the mailbox what's life like inside the mailbox it's certainly a lot uh, happier and, and 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 more fruitful now that they have taken up hobbies because before they were just sitting around they look like bumps on a uh, a love seat now they're 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 doing things and that's what's also interesting Tim and, and Lance is that people are just interested in the lives of Mary and Shelley almost to the point that they're real people you know what kind of work do they do how do they stay warm how do they eat how often do they get out somebody got even really existential and said. Maybe you're the one in the mailbox and Mary and Shelley are outside of the mailbox. <laughs> and I, and I, I go, I can't, I can't wrap my head around that. <laughs> this fascination. And then periodically, I haven't posted for a, a month or so. Somebody will go and, and, and say, you know, uh, what's going on with Mary and Shelley? We haven't, we haven't heard anything. You know, when, when will the saga continue? You know, my eight-year-old and I have been following this story and we haven't had had anything to read about in, in, in a month. Uh, please come up with something else to tell us what they're up to. 
Uh, but clearly, I think a storybook um, starting with Mary and Shelley and the mailbox and my wife and myself being kind of secondary characters is probably the way I would go. That is a really, really good idea. I think it's begging to be told as a as a children's story. It's a really excellent idea. Now, what do you what do you think? I you know I I I think the main reason why this has caught on and gone viral and. I don't know if I mentioned it. It's in the Daily Mail, the largest tabloid in England. Just got interviewed by the People magazine of Austria. That it's an international story now that people want it. And I always kind of viewed it. What what drives this is you know whimsy, whimsical, fun, silly. You know something different than the 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 doldrums that you read about in the news. But I think, you know, and I think maybe why you you contacted me is that the mystery aspect is also a, a driver for this. Is that, uh, you know, everybody loves a whodunit. <laughs> and, uh, and I guess this is a whodunit. <laughs> it's like poignant and you can go down various roads with it. And it's not like a mystery that is going to bring you down. I think that's what attracted us to this was that it was just this endearing, poignant mystery. Some people accuse me of, of emulating, uh, I don't know if you saw the uh, Netflix show, The Watcher, yes. Oh, yes. that it reminded them of, of that, that I've got a neighbor watching me and that I should be careful <laughs> and I shouldn't be so welcoming of, of Mary and Shelley and I should have left them in the in the garbage pail. But, you know, once again, those are people that, you know, kind of looking at this from a more sinister perspective. I never viewed it in that way. Initially, as I said, viewed it as a mistake. I in fact, I didn't even mention this, is that I do have a neighbor, one of the neighbors on the cul-de-sac, her name is Shelly, and I actually asked her, did you happen to put these dolls in her mailbox? She looked at me like I was crazy, so I, I, I knew it wasn't, it wasn't her, so I, I did eliminate her. And I don't even think it's somebody on the cul-de-sac. I think it's somebody either in our sub that lives you know, further down the block or somebody in one of the neighboring subs that has you know, either walked their door, ridden their bike, or just walked themselves. Now, somebody in a golf cart could do it pretty quickly. You know, they got all the stuff right there. They're not seen holding the stuff while walking to the mailbox. There's only probably about maybe 15 people that use their golf carts through there. So that could narrow it down if I thought indeed... It was somebody with a golf cart. But as I said, I, I haven't had any care to solve the mystery. I would be disappointed if and when I do solve the mystery for uh, the fact that that might have this all come to an end. To me, I feel like this is ultimately a, a story about human connection. Even though you guys, you haven't actually connect, connected directly, you really are communicating in a really funny way. I mean, it's a very human thing that's happening. You don't get enough of those. But it's also a human connection between the neighbors because the neighborhood gets a kick out of it uh, whenever I post and, and everybody else that's on the next door app. And it's a human connection to everybody that's read one of the articles and is going to be seeing uh, or hearing your podcast because it is an endearing, a lovable kind of kind of story. And not everything is bad in the world sort of thing. And there's good. And really, the good person is the person doing this. I mean, they're, they're doing that out of the kindness of their heart. They realize that they're giving joy to people, uh, that people like following this. I, I understand that, that clearly. That's why I continue to write about it. It's connecting people where, unfortunately, people have become so disconnected since the pandemic in a small way is bring, bringing people together national internationally not just here in the united states it's it's canada it's mexico it's the uk it's it's austria uh, Australia. The story has just gotten picked up by so many different outlets. I was having my car repair, and I had to um, have a rent a car. And we're driving, and and they give me a, they gave me a ride back to to my house uh, after I dropped off the rent a car. He saw the mailboxes. He's pulling into my driveway, and he goes. Is that the mailbox that I read about in a story a couple of weeks ago? And I go, yeah, yeah, I'm the, I'm the mailbox guy. <laughs> and he said, that is so funny. That story, I loved it. My wife loved it. Can I take a picture with the mailbox? <laughs> I said sure, <laughs> and, and I took a photo of him in the mailbox by the mailbox. So it's a bit of a um, uh, a tourist attraction <laughs> in this city of Orchard Lake. Doesn't have a lot of tourist attractions, so this mailbox is is right up there. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. I would definitely take a picture with uh, your mailbox as well, if I could. <laughs> maybe I could. You know, you know what? Maybe, maybe there is, you know, people say, well, what's the revenue angle? You know, everybody always wants to know what the revenue angle is, other than maybe if I write a children's book. But the revenue I might be is that I charge maybe, you know, 50 cents a photo. People that take 
take take photos next to the mailbox. Maybe that's how I could <laughs> generate generate money from this story. Are you fully expecting there to be even tinier figurines put inside the tiny mailbox that you put on the no, house? No, the tiny mailbox I have is is lucky to hold a, a little miniature a little miniature package. The, the mailbox itself is only this big and that wide. Now my mailbox is big. It's it's ten ten inches wide, fifteen inches high. And 26 inches long. And they're always in the back because I can still get mail mail in the front. Now, people have said, you know, what about an addition? You know, you're running out of space. Uh, um, you know, you're going to get upset when they want a pool and an uh, outside deck. <laughs> I did go to the mailbox maker and asked him about a, a, a deck. He said that that might be too elaborate plus this four-year wait. But he is willing to put railings <laughs> on the roof, so kind of a roof deck as a possibility. But I said, well, will the, will the railings be removable? Because when this story dies down and no, nobody's living in the mailbox, I really do. It's not going to look so nice to have a railing on the top of the mailbox. He goes, no, it would be permanent. So I've got to make a decision. When he comes to do the maintenance on the mailbox, I've got to give him a firm decision. Do I want a railings on the roof so they can sunbathe outside? I don't think that's a very hard decision at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you what would you do? You want you want the railings on the roof? I would do the railings, I would do the pool, I would give him a nice deck. You, you know what I what I really need to do, and this is something I would provide, is a little rope ladder in case there's a fire. You know, that's a, <laughs> Oh, good call. An escape. <laughs> they can get out of the mailbox and and climb climb down. Well, speaking of that, you said um that you were curious what they were going to do for like Fourth of July. I just want to put it out there that there should not be any fireworks happening. People have said that there's you know the, uh, Dr. Powell is very good natured about all of this until he's you know gets a cherry bomb in his mailbox. And believe me, that that's been a concern even before Mary and Shelley moved in. Is that you know? So unfortunately, people destroy things. That mailbox, you know, kind of stands out as something. I mean, people knock over mailboxes all the time, uh, but they might get more joy out of one that uh, uh, looks like a home. That would make me very sad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kids in Michigan, you better stay away from that mailbox and all the other ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no eggs. No eggs on the on the mail. Well, Don, this is uh, this has been a fantastic chat. I uh, we really appreciate you coming on here and, and sharing uh, your story of um, these mysterious dolls appearing in your mailbox. Pleasure chatting with you. Uh, if a year from now you want an update, feel free to give me a call. I, I document all the changes that are taking place. By then I might know who's doing it and we can let your listeners know uh, that the mystery has been solved, but hopefully that's not going to be the case and uh, it just continues for as long as it can continue. 